I've shared a little bit here and there about what life is like here in Cebu City. Um, sometimes when people say Cebu, uh, they mean Cebu City, but really Cebu is an entire island. Um, so, you know, for this purpose uh, here in this video, we're talking about Cebu City, the actual city. Um, I've shared a little bit here and there about uh, life here, but what I wanted to do was answer the question that I, I get. Um, I get it in PM and, and people will ask, well, what do you think of Cebu? What do you think of Cebu? You know, do you like Cebu? Um, and so I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and do one video encompassing the many facets of, of Cebu City. It's a popular place because, of course, the, the airport lands right in Mactan. Now, Mactan is considered part of Cebu, uh, but it's really a, a little island, very small island, uh, right off the coast of Cebu, so close that it's really connected by two bridges. So you can easily just drive uh, from Mactan to Cebu. Although that brings me to the first topic. Um, if you do plan on living in Mactan or you plan on visiting Mactan from Cebu City, um, you're going to run into a lot of traffic. Traffic was kind of bad back in 2012. Uh, it would take maybe 45 minutes to get from Mactan over to Cebu City. Uh, however, uh, now it can turn, depending on what time of day you go, to get from Cebu to Mactan or vice versa, don't be surprised if it can take you from two to three hours. Um, I've tried doing it by taking the ferry and hopping over. That really didn't save me much time. By the time you go through all the queues and the lines and wait for the ferry, and then it's a 20-minute ferry. I mean, it's just, you know, pretty long. People do it because they have to. It's a cheap way to get across after they get off work. But um, you can take a taxi, but again, your taxi is going to just sit in traffic, especially once you get to the bridge. If traffic isn't moving on the bridge, you're just not moving. So um, as far as Mactan goes, that's the situation now. Lots of traffic. So if you do decide to live on Mactan because it's cheaper, which it is a little bit cheaper to live there, you can get some pretty nice condo deals and whatever. Um, don't expect that you're just going to hop over on the bridge anytime you feel like grabbing lunch in Cebu. You're going to have to plan to do that early in the morning or maybe mid-afternoon when the traffic goes down get to Cebu, stay the whole day, maybe even stay the night, because then after 5 p.m., it's just solid traffic until like 9, 9, 9.30 at night. Pretty bad traffic. So take that into consideration if you're thinking of Mactan as an alternative to living in, you know, the city. Now, as far as um, uh, Cebu, the city, uh, let's see, a couple of things come to mind. Um, number one, uh, I guess it's all pros and cons. Uh, one, one great thing I love about Cebu uh, is that there's a lot to do. Now, there's a lot to do depending on what you want to do. Um, if you want to swim at the beach, then you're going to have to travel. Um, I wouldn't really recommend the beaches so much south of Cebu. I would recommend the beaches north of Cebu. They're closer and nicer. So if you want to go to the beach, plan on driving about a eh, half hour to an hour to get out to uh, Compostela. Everything north of Compostela, there's nice little resorts there. They got a beach access. Um, they're not too expensive. A lot of them are like mom and pop type resorts. And you can get them for about 35 bucks a night or so. And, you know, and they, they even have a swimming pool a lot of times. So <clears throat> as far as going to the beach, even though there is a coastline that you'll see on the map right by Cebu, that is where all of the ferries uh, and shipping uh, ships uh, pass through. So it's pretty much their version of the Hudson River. It's just a bunch of diesel exhaust in there. It's really nasty. You're not going to swim in it. And if you're on Mactan and you want to go swimming, um, you can get next to the ocean, but it's going to be a bunch of rocks. I'm talking like big rocks. So you're not going to really have some great beach access in Mactan unless you pay the day use at one of the resorts. Now, if you go to a day use uh, for a resort in, say, Dowen, out in Negros Oriental, uh, you can get a day use for like 200 pesos, you know, four U.S. dollars. Um, and you can spend the whole day at the resort. It's really a great deal. But if you want to use the day use over in Mactan, I think there's like the Blue Water Resort and a couple others. Uh, they're not 200 pesos. I mean, expect to pay about six, 800 pesos or more 
um, to to use those. Now, depending on the resort, some of that is uh, what they call consumable. In other words, it's credit towards your lunch or whatever, which is going to be overpriced anyway because it's a resort. So um, if if you're just looking to swim and you're on Mactan, go to one of the subdivisions and they usually have a swimming pool and for like eh, 30, 40 pesos, you can swim there all day till they close. So if you just want to swim in a swimming pool, that's really the better, cheaper route to go. Now, when you're in Cebu City, um, again, beaches are not, not one of the strong points. However, uh, when it comes to nightlife, and I'll define nightlife. Uh, by nightlife, I don't so much mean, you know, partying and going nuts and, you know, the hookers and all that kind of thing. Although if you want that, there's Mango Square, which is very small. It's, it's really only, it's kind of, it's kind of overblown the way people think about it. It's really just like four or five little discotheques in one building. Um, and it's just that one area. You have to go like three blocks down the road till you start running into some some scattered you know little bikini bars out there but um you know if you do want that kind of thing there's mango square um but when i say nightlife i'm talking about live music a place where you can just sit outdoors get a drink you know maybe dance if you want to just kind of have a nice evening listening to music so for that you've got it park which is really cool they got the shugbo mercado i've got a whole video on that um you can listen to a live band and just chill kick back you know order some i don't know some potato snacks or whatever and just have a nice evening and there's so many places in cebu you can go to any of the major hotels near the quest like for instance the mandarin um, and again, the schedule changes all the time, so you, you kind of just got to know the hotels and pop around a bit. There's the Welcome Hotel, uh, which is also kind of a little bit down from the Quest. And you can go in on, say, a Friday, Saturday night. Oh, another great place to go that always has music, and it's pretty, pretty classy, pretty nice, is the Radisson. Go down to the Radisson on a Friday night, a Saturday night, uh, right about eh, 7, 8 p.m., and they'll have lounge singers out there that are really good. Uh, it's a lot of local Filipino talent and great singers. Sometimes they're acoustic or they'll do like um, basically a sound system karaoke type thing arrangement from a computer. But, you know, you can really chill back. And again, you can order you can order food to come to the, uh, the lobby area. They got tables and you can just have some nice food, some wine, you know, listen to the music. And, and it's till late at night. It's till like, you know, midnight, one, two in the morning, uh, all these different uh, music venues. You can also go out to Park Mall. They have music out there. Lots of music. Oh, and Cubanas. Cubanas has good music. And and it's uh, you want to get there a little early, maybe about 7, 30, 8 p.m. to get a table if you want to sit near the little stage area. Um, uh, Cubanas is really relaxing. And again, they got some pretty good food there. Um, not just pizza. I mean, they got all kinds of really good stuff. Uh, and again, you get to hear some really great talent. <clears throat> So uh, when it comes to nightlife, Cebu has plenty of that. Not on the scale of, say, Makati or Manila, but enough that you can have a choice of places when you want to get out for the night. Another positive thing is the uh, whole, uh, aside from the IT, the IT center area, which has tons of food and the Park Social and the Shugbo Mercado, there's also the Ayala Mall which they'll have live music up on the terraces once in a while. They'll have uh, Zumba going on, um, you know, so you get to kind of just hang out and listen to the music or whatever, unless you want to do Zumba. Um, and then there's tons of restaurants. you got a big movie theater. Um, the movies, I believe the last showing is like at 9 p.m. So even if it's end of the day, you can go catch a movie and just watch it till 11 or whatever in the evening. Also, if you're a night person like me, you can go to like the back side of Ayala Mall and there's a couple of restaurants there that are open all night. If you go to the IT park, there's a lot of restaurants that are open 24 hours a day because they have all of the two shifts there for the, um, the BPO centers and call centers and all that. So uh, there's plenty of food, uh, plenty to do, plenty of music. Um, so, so that's kind of one of the, the positive things. Now, uh, as far as people ask me, well, where, where in Cebu is the best place to live? 
I'll give you my, my slant on it. I've been here since October of last year. It's now uh, beginning of September. So I've spent about the last 11 and a half months living in Cebu City. And I lived in La Hougue. I lived over by IT Park. And then I moved to the place I'm at now, which is over in uh, Mabolo. So after, after bouncing around a little bit of Cebu and going around, I've been to all the malls. I've, you know, gone to not all, but many of the tourist locations, Taoist Temple, Malaya's Temple, different places. Um, what I'll tell you is that if you're, if you're going to live in Cebu, there's, there's three areas. And I'll tell you what I honestly think just of them. Okay. There is, <clears throat> I guess on the lower end of the scale, is what I call downtown. Uh, the area a bit south, I guess it would be technically southeast, but you know, downtown, which is out by the Cologne district, that's where the bus, uh, south bus terminal is. That's where the, um, the e, e mall, or they also, it's the Elizabeth mall. So if you look on the map and you find Elizabeth mall, I'll, I'll put links to this there in the, in the comment section. Um, and if you look at the Elizabeth mall, uh, that whole area, the Cologne district. Um, I go there. I like hanging out there. I like getting food off the street there. I, I like it because it's very busy and there's lots of people. There's also pickpockets, so watch your pockets and your necklaces and all that. Um, but I like Cologne because it's very busy and gritty and, and it's downtown. It's, it's, there's food and there's people and it's a great place if you're looking to meet girls. There's like uh, three universities and a vocational center there. They all go to Elizabeth Mall right about uh, lunchtime. You go to the Elizabeth Mall at lunchtime and it's just, you're swimming through an ocean of beautiful women. Um, again, these are all like you know, college students that are, or nursing students that are going to the universities there. Uh, Velez University is right over there. Um, actually, Velez University is over by Mango. Yeah. But um, so there's, Cologne District is a, an interesting place. I don't, I don't mind hanging out there for the day. But honestly, I would not want to live downtown. I would not want to live in Cologne, me personally. Um, Excuse me. Not because I couldn't rough it. It's just that I don't like seeing urban blight every time I walk outside the door. That's just me. To me, it would be depressing. Um, also, there's a higher crime factor there. Uh, you know, if you're going to run into meth heads, it's going to be down in in Cologne District, especially once you get like the south end of Cologne District. <clears throat> it's it's just really kind of gritty. I mean, it's pretty strange. Um, again, I don't recommend it, but I have walked out around there like one, two in the morning and you see some of the strange, well, they're, they're Shabu heads. They're just really messed up. So you really don't want to be out there late at night. Um, and so I would not recommend, I've talked to guys that live, in fact, two of the guys that I talked to that lived down there had, were both telling me the story of how their apartment got robbed. So I, I just don't really recommend it. It's a great place to hang out. Like I said, you get some great deals. I buy all my housewares in downtown, my clothes. I, I save money shopping downtown. Um, if I need to catch the bus, I catch it downtown. But living, it's not my first choice. Okay, uh, second choice, it would be the Mandawi Consolacion area. Now, Mandawi Consolacion is only maybe, oh, eh, 15, 20 minute taxi ride with traffic. We're not talking about a big distance. It's just the traffic. But it's it's just outside of Cebu City proper. Mendawi and Consolacion have everything you'd probably want as far as like nice big malls. It's very close to uh, Compostela, so you can get to the beach faster. Um, it's got, uh, oh, guy, uh, pretty much, like I said, everything you'd want. They got live music there. They got uh, maybe a couple places to see. The big selling point is being near the beach, the big malls, and the lower rent. You're going to pay lower rent, a little bit more than Cologne. Cologne has got the cheapest rent, but again, I don't really want to live there. Um, Mandawi and Consolacion, uh, there are expensive places in Consolacion, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's some condos there that are more in the five to $600 a month price range. But you can find a place cheaper there that's worth living at than you would in Uptown. Uh, so that brings me to Uptown. 
Uh, Uptown is where I'm living now. You got nice condos. Now they are going to cost a little more. They're going to be more like five, six hundred a month. They do have places over in Lot Eight. Uh, in fact, I can see Lot Eight out my window. Um, they do have places at Lot Eight which you can get for mm, maybe four fifty, four seventy five, but they're very small. I mean, it's almost like a wide hallway. There's enough room for a twin bed, a kitchenette, a TV on the wall, and a window. That's about it. So it's more like a dorm. Um, and that's what you're going to get for maybe, say, 475 at Lot 8. So um, you can get an inexpensive place. But if you want to check out, say, for instance, uh, Calix or Avita or any of the other major towers that are here, um, they're going for anywhere from just figure 20,000 pesos to start. Uh, and again, sometimes you can get one for 18,000. If it hasn't rented in a long time, the owner's desperate, they'll lower the price a little bit. Some, if you really look and talk to the property managers in the condo place, uh, they can, they can usually find you a deal. It's just a matter of whether you like that particular apartment, the furniture they put in it and whatever. But I highly recommend if you're going to live in Cebu long term, uh, stay uptown, stay near Ayala Mall, stay near IT Park. That's where uh, LaGuardia too, I stayed there as well. This is IT Park, Ayala area. This is where you're going to have really the best experience that Cebu has to offer. Yeah, you're going to pay a bit more for it. I mean, if you want to, if you want rent that's a hundred dollars a month you need to go off to some small island and live in the province if you want all the amenities that the ayala area has to offer well then yeah it's going to cost the rent's going to be a little bit uh my place is roughly well it is it's twenty five thousand pesos a month plus another seven thousand peso a month just for electric so we're talking thirty two thousand uh a month just for rent and electric um, the only good thing is that I get fiber optic included uh, with the package, so eh, maybe that saves me 20, 30 bucks. Um, actually, about 30, 40 bucks. So um, I'm very happy, but uh, again, some people don't really want to pay that much. Uh, but really, if you're going to live in Cebu long term, you, you don't want to be in Cologne. Now, here's the other thing about living in uh, Mandawi, Compostela, I mean, Constellacion, is that you will get lower rents and you will have you could be happy staying there and just enjoying everything it has to offer but if you really want to be coming over to sm cebu or ayala mall or even a little bit further uh seaside mall you're going to spend in taxi to get here i mean it's going to take you about 15 20 minutes it's going to be about 200 pesos right about there so you're talking about four bucks each way so if you want to come in and enjoy ayala you're going to figure about 400 to 450 pesos in taxi fare just to get here and go back to mandawi so if you really want to enjoy ayala the movie theaters and the the music and the it park and the shugbo mercado and the social and the park social and all that uh, you really should be living in the Ayala area. So um, I hope that gives you a pretty good overview of just the landscape here. Um, if you have any other comments about, you know, if you have a question about, uh, say, for instance, rent prices, I don't usually give really firm rent prices for condos and whatever because it's always changing. The only good thing is it's usually changing for the better. It's, you know, there's a glut of condos available so year after year the price seems to be going down plus you have the devaluation of the peso so what i was paying twenty five thousand pesos five months ago i'm paying less in dollars five months later because of the devaluation of the peso so rent basically gets cheaper every month so um it's kind of hard to really nail down right now in a video now prices because you may look at this video eight months from now and, and it'll be cheaper it'll be different so um oh another thing uh transportation if you're gonna be in uptown uh cebu they're actually all of Cebu City. It's very easy to get around. You don't need a car. In fact, having a car will be the bane of your existence, in my opinion, because you're going to sit in traffic. You can't pass easily. If you have a motorcycle, you can, you know, cut through and make your way through. Um, you know, some people are really freaked out about driving in Cebu. I just rent. I've done it before. 
I, in fact, I just this afternoon rented out a motorbike. What I recommend as the optimum situation, um, personally, I, I don't have the need for a motorcycle in Cebu. I can, I can jump on a jeepney that's going to the mall. I can use Grab. In fact, I use Grab all the time. Um, I can get around on a Hubble Hubble. If I'm in a real hurry and there's traffic, I get on a Hubble Hubble and he just scoots right through traffic. Um, there's plenty of transportation available. You don't need your own. But uh, what's great is like this afternoon, I just rented a motorbike. I'll give you the link to the place that I used. Very easy. You just type in Cebu City, and it's good for all of the Philippines. It's one website. You type in the city that you want, and then it'll show you all the privately owned, and some of them are businesses, uh, motorbikes that you can rent. And it's pretty cheap, I consider. I mean, it's for instance, I just now got a motorbike today is saturday and i don't have to return it till midday monday and it's going to cost me about 18 dollars uh roughly 950 pesos right about there so um so considering i don't need a scooter or motorcycle all the time uh and by the way if you do have one you got to pay usually um uh, for parking if you're in a condo unit. They, that's how they make money is they, they don't just give you a parking space, they charge you for it. And they may charge you up to $60, $70 a month for it, roughly $2 a day. <clears throat> so um, that's another cost you have to take into consideration with owning a bike. Whereas for me, I just want to take a bike ride you know, this weekend with my buddies, so I just rent one for the weekend I need it, and then I give it back. And I don't have to pay for storage or maintenance or any of that. I just rent the bike. You don't need your own transportation in Cebu. So I uh, hope that helps you out. If I left out anything, uh, again, feel free to ask in the comments. And I'll see you there. Okay. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.